Yes, Jasper, we're gonna get to these treats here in a second. This is Jasper, this is Millie. I keep on forgetting their names. Uh, and uh, they like to get in the trash. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can teach your dogs to stay out of the trash. Now, uh, to begin with, let's talk about why dogs get in the trash. For a dog's perspective, it's like, okay, you got this little box. Everybody puts stuff in there every day. It's really interesting to me, the stuff. I would like to have this stuff. You don't seem to want it, why can't I have it? That's very difficult for dogs to understand. Now, these uh, clients I'm here with today have bigger dogs than my parents do, but my parents do the same exact thing, so I'm gonna have you pan over there and show where your trash can is. All right, so putting our trash can on top of our work island is probably not the ideal situation, but if your dog is getting in the trash, you gotta do what you gotta do. But I see a lot of people doing this, and when they do this, they're just moving the trash away, they're making it more challenging, but they're not teaching the dog to stay out of the trash, and that's what I wanna accomplish in this video. Now, uh, I'm gonna use the escalating consequences that I developed about seven years ago to communicate that the dogs need to stay away from the trash. Now, if you don't know what these escalating consequences are, if you go to doggoneproblems.com and click dog training tips, on the right side of the page is a search box and you type in escalating consequences. Uh, you'll see write-ups, uh, I create a page for every client I work with, you'll find write-ups for other clients where I have a video where I specifically talk about all the details of the escalating consequences. Uh, but in this one, basically I'm gonna use uh, my authority by standing up, my authority goes directional, whatever direction my hips and shoulders are pointing at, and I'm gonna put whatever protecting me behind me. Now once I put the trash can down here, I'm gonna establish a boundary of about three feet that the dog are not, dogs are not allowed to go near it. They can go anywhere else in the room, I don't care what they do as long as they don't break other rules, but they're not allowed to go there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, well first of all, we'll give you some treats for sitting and being good. And I'm gonna go over here, grab the trash can, and I'm gonna put it here in the middle of the living room. Now when I do this, only do this when you have time to do this. If you're gonna be preoccupied, you're watching a game or something like that, don't do it then. Now I like to put the, this right between the TV and the couch. So this way we get to do this and practice doing, uh, training the dogs to stay out of here while we're doing the other things we're gonna do anyways. So um, let's go ahead and So I'm keeping my hips pointed at the dogs. If it's too close, I walk into the dog until the dog turns sideways. Now, sometimes when you're doing this, you might want to put like a roast or a piece of meat or something here that's going to be very interesting for the dogs. Now, the dogs can come within three feet. I usually identify three feet by holding my arms out and going like this. So he's across the line technically. I don't know if you can see him, but he is laying down and she's laying down as well. Now, when I'm standing I, and I'm right next to it, I'm in a claiming position. I'm very powerful and authoritative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, just so I stay on camera, I come and sit down way over here outside of the room. Now, the dogs are being very good because we've spent a lot of time working with them throughout the session. But normally the dogs would start to get up and go back over there. So what I'm gonna do is try to make this a little bit more enticing. They know I have treats. So I'm gonna put the treats here. And just to make it even more so, So now he's a little bit too close, too close for that one. So wherever he goes, I keep my hips pointed in front of him. I'm waiting for him to SIT. Now he's kind of quasi challenging me. He's not looking directly at me, but he's not moving away. So if I, and now he's kind of drifting this way. So to communicate, I take a step towards him. I'm taking territory from him and I'm keeping my hips pointed at him throughout. Now he's still, I don't wanna say challenging, but he's looking at this orientation. And sweetheart, please don't touch his tail right now. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and ask him to give me a little bit more space. And you see he's trying to go around me. Now I can tell him to SIT at this point, but he's perpendicular to me. So now, and you can see that she's really interested in the treat. I take a step back and I pause. I take another step back and I pause. This is too far away, so I'm gonna put it a little bit closer. We'll make it even more enticing, drop a couple more treats around. I take a step back and I keep my hips pointed towards them and I'm pausing in between each step. When I sit down, I lose some perceived authority. So when you sit down, you're gonna be ready to bounce up and hiss and rush at the dogs. When I get to the chair, I don't sit down right away, I wait another pause, then I sit down. Now ideally, I would like to be sitting right uh, to the right of the camera, right over there, so that the tr I'm watching the TV and the trash can is between me and the TV. Now you can see the dogs, and at least she is really, Millie is really interested in them. When she lays her chin on the floor, that's kind of a resigned. 
I understand I'm not allowed to have this, but I want you to know that I want this, so I'm gonna point myself right at it, so there's no question that I want it. He's still saying perpendicular to me, and he's, he's looking at it a little bit. Now you saw, when I shift my feet over like that, that's when he So when I shifted, crossed my legs, that put me at a disadvantage to come over here, and he, was gonna, he looked at it as a sign, either I can get there before he can stop me, or he's not guarding it anymore. So he stopped, and he's still three feet away. So I take a step back, and I pause again. Step back, and I pause. Now I'm at the chair. I pause before I sit down. And since the leg crossing seemed to be a thing for him, I'm going to do it again. Now he's clearly watching me at this point. Turning away from the object and laying down is a way of surrendering. Now, if I were to leave the room, I guarantee you they would come and take those. When we want to teach our dogs how to do these sort of things, we have to practice. And we're going to practice it one step at a time. So at first, it might be just going and sitting down, waiting for the dogs to lay down like this. And when they do, I might go ahead and go ahead and give them a treat. I'm not going to let them come over to it. I'm going to pick up the treat and give it to them. But I want to reward them for leaving alone. Now, when I give the treat, I could actually say something like ignore or distance or away and make that a command word so that if they're sniffing or looking at the trash can, I say, wait, they know if I go away, I'm going to get a treat. Now, they're going to probably sniff and like kind of start coming over. You have to be very cognizant of where that boundary is and be consistent where you enforce it. Now, first, as soon as they lay down, we give, pick up the treat and give it to them. After, after they start laying down right away and they're not challenging us, then we might watch and maybe wait 15 seconds. Maybe we do five seconds and then we give them the treat. Next time, 10. Next time, 15. Then 15, 30, 45, one minute. And then, I don't have anything, buddy. Um, and then I'm going to go by one minute increments up to 15 minutes long. Now, the dog's going to walk around it. They can go anywhere. In the room. They just can't come within three feet of it. If they do, I'm going to hiss first. If they continue, I'm going to stand up. If they don't move away, then I'm going to march towards them and get myself between them and the object and move them away. And again, it's ideal to put it, the trash can between you and your TV because when you're sitting up to waiting for 12 or 13 minutes for your dog to not get in the trash, that's boring to sit around watching. But we spend more than 15 minutes a day watching TV. So this way we put ourselves in a position to correct the dog because the dog goes into our line of sight when it tries to take it and it blows the dog's mind because they're like, normally when I'm watching that stupid box, I can get away with whatever the hell I want because they're not paying attention to me. But your timing has to be precise. If I hiss too late, or I move over too nonchalantly, or, yeah, I saw that. And dogs are very crafty. They're gonna to try to go around, they're gonna to try to go scratch the door, get you to go to the door and let them out, and then they're gonna come and take it. So be aware that dogs are not fools. They're gonna to try to have a strategy to get this. Now at the end, when I'm done, I'm gonna make sure I put this away. Don't make the mistake of like, oh, we're at 12 minutes, they still have three minutes, but I can go take a quick uh, bathroom break. Uh-uh. Stay here for the three minutes when you're done, you put this away. The idea when we're trying to extinguish a behavior is we want to prevent the dog from engaging in that behavior at all for at least a 30 day period of time. So in the meantime, while we're doing this, we maybe put the trash can in the pantry. Uh, I wouldn't put it up on the counter, um, but I would want to spend time doing this every day. Now, if we're, we have a family with kids, so if we're busy with the kids helping them homework or eating or something like that, this is not the appropriate time to do it. But when we're sitting down to watch a movie, that's a great time to do this. And you can do it for longer than the 15 minute period of time. I just say 15 minutes is kind of a baseline. So he was still lingering too close, so I wanted to communicate no. And dogs would be like that. They'd be like, oh, just, I don't even care about your trash. I'm just happen to be hanging out here. BS. They want to get in your trash. Or they go over there, they start chewing on a bone. They're waiting for you to drop your guard. So again, structure things in a way where you can help the dog practice the behavior that you want them to exhibit. Control the environment, control the settings so that it's not as intense. Maybe if the kids are running around, there's a jackhammer at the next door neighbor's house construction, or there's a, a marching band on your street. Those are things that are going to make it more difficult. So you want to start this off in the easiest possible scenario and then gradually start making more and more challenging until we get a real world situation. And then you have the trash can back at the end of the work island and you throw like a pot roast, you know, the, the netting or something like that in there and then come and sit over here. And you're kind of watching the dogs out of your corner of your eye. One little, uh, one other thing that you can do, technology is wonderful. I would show you my phone right now, my, guard, uh, my client is using it to film this, but uh, a lot of people will set up a security camera and will Skype themselves or watch on the security camera's uh, live feed. 
So I've had people that do this and put the security camera here pointed right there. Then they grab their iPad and they go into the other room and they're just watching. And then they see the dogs. The dogs usually kind of circle it a little bit. And as soon as they turn, for, turn towards it, you like rush in the room and you make the hissing. Like, Jesus, she sees everything. And that's the point is dogs will take advantage if they see that you're not there. So if you first have them practice when you're in the room, then start practicing when, when you're out of the room and they're here and the target is right here. I jokingly say there are no entrapment laws for dogs and setting them up gives us the ability to teach them the behavior that we want them to display in all sorts of different scenarios. This scenario is about how you can teach your dog to stay out of the trash.